Now, 2 Timothy 4.10 ranks as one of my favorite Bible verses. That being said, however, 2 Timothy 4.10 might very well rank as one of the saddest verses in the Bible. So, why on earth would I choose one of the saddest verses as a favorite? Well, for me at least, a favorite Bible verse is something that I found meaningful, something that has hit me right between the spiritual eyes, something that has challenged me over the years, and 2 Timothy 4.10 definitely fits that criteria. It's found right at the end of Paul's second letter to Timothy, and all he says is this, For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Curious as to what Paul was meaning? Well, stick with me. Do you even know I'm here? Hey, do you even know I'm here? <laughs> Ooh, I smell him or her. I never know the kind of wildlife I'll come across when filming these videos. For those of you outside of North America, that's what we call a skunk, and you definitely don't want to get very close to one of them because their defense mechanism is to shoot out this horrible smelling spray. Perhaps that's the one that sprayed my dog just a couple of weeks ago. Anyways, Demas. Demas, not exactly a household name, right? Even if you've attended church for many years, I'm guessing you've probably haven't even uh, have heard of him. And yet, it would appear that Demas had played a major role in the Apostle Paul's ministry. In Paul's life, Paul would have considered him to be a friend. And yet, outside of 2 Timothy 4.10, there's only two other verses where he is even mentioned. And both of those are found in two uh, other of Paul's letters, towards the end of those letters where members of Paul's ministry team are sending their greetings to the recipients of those letters. In Colossians 4.14, Paul wrote, Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. And then verse 24 of Philemon, and so do Mark, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. That's it. That's all that the Bible mentions of Demas. And yet, from that little bit, I think that we can gather three important things about Demas. Number one, he played a major role in the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Number two, he ditched Paul in Paul's greatest hour of need. And number three, he did so because he was in love with this present world. So number one, he had probably played a, an important role in Paul's ministry. In Colossians, he's mentioned right alongside of Luke. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. And then in Philemon, he's mentioned right alongside of Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark. And Timothy, Paul's second in command, knew Demas by name. So yes, Demas, he was right up there. The second is that in Paul's greatest hour of need, Demas had deserted him. Paul had been arrested by the Roman authorities. He was in jail awaiting trial, which would ultimately determine his fate, whether he would live or die. And 2 Timothy, it's the last letter that we have of Paul's. It was essentially his last will and testament. And something that he laments about throughout the letter is how many Christians had deserted him, how so many Christians had disassociated themselves from him, fearing that they too would be arrested. And the third is that Demas abandoned Paul because he was in love with this present world. What did Paul exactly mean by that? Did he mean that Demas abandoned him because he just wanted to save his own skin? Or did he mean that Demas had completely abandoned the faith and had fled to Thessalonica to live out the lusts of the flesh, to live just like the world? Obviously, we'll never know the answer. Either scenario is equally sad. I mean, think about it. He worked right alongside of the Apostle Paul, of all people. He could have asked him any theological question. He would have witnessed all of the miracles that God had done through Paul. And yet, in the end, Demas chose this present world. He chose this present life over the eternal. Over the years, I've thought about Demas, whatever happened to him. Did he live many years afterwards? And was he plagued by guilt over what he had done to Paul? Or had he become so hardened that he simply forced all of it out of his mind? And 
that's why 2 Timothy 4.10 ranks as one of my favorite Bible verses. Obviously not because it's uplifting and positive, but because it's very sobering, it's very challenging. Which do I love more, this present world or the eternal? I pray that if and when push comes to shove, I will not be like Demas.